Welcome everyone. My name is Daniel Heubrechts from Bonn University. I'm chairing the section Algebraic and Complex Geometry this afternoon and have now the great pleasure to announce Chi Li from Rutgers University. Chi Li has made uh, important contributions to his area of expertise, which includes case stability, kilometrics with special curvature properties and moduli spaces of Fano manifolds. He will deliver his talk from Copenhagen. Please use the Discord server for questions. The title of his talk is Canonical Kilometrics and Stability of Algebraic Varieties. Please. Okay. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, thanks uh, to everyone for being here, either online or in person here at Copenhagen. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my collaborators, uh, without whom I would not be able to come here. So today I will uh, survey some recent uh, developments in the study of canonical kilometrics and their relation with the stability of algebraic varieties. Okay, so this talk has four parts. First part, I will introduce uh, this problem, and then I will talk about an analytic story, and then uh, move on to algebraic story, and finally, I will talk about how they interact with each other. So let's start by recalling some concept. Assume X is a n-dimensional compact uh, complex manifold, uh, let ZI be holomorphic coordinates, uh, by a cater for, we mean it's uh, to be a one one form uh, which is closed. So, under holomorphic coordinates, it has this form. So, omega ij bar form a uh, positive definite uh, uh, matrix. So, it uh, gives rise to a uh, cater metric. So, I will not distinguish cater form with the, the associated uh, cater metric. Uh, because the cater form is closed, it defines a, co a cohomology class called the cater class in the second cohomology group. A basic factor we need is the DDC lemma, which says that if we fix a reference cater form omega zero, then any other cater form in the same cater class can be written as omega zero plus DDC phi, where phi is called the cater potential. Uh, DDC phi is given by this uh, expression at the bottom, where phi ij bar uh, is just uh, the uh, complex Hessian matrix of phi. Uh, sorry, it's not okay. Uh, a large class of Kähler manifolds uh, consists of projective manifolds. Uh, let's recall this. Let L be a holomorphic line bundle. Uh, uh, Kadara's theorem tells us that L is uh, ample if we can embed X into a large projective space by using holomorphic sections of a multiple of L. Uh, we can take this uh, to be a definition of ampleness of L. Uh, then we can restrict the forbidden study metric on the projective space to X and we get a Keller metric. And this Keller, uh, Keller metric or Keller form represents the first term class of the holomorphic line bundle. Uh, now we look at the curvature of the Keller metric it's given by this expression. Uh, there's a well-known uniformization theorem for Keller manifolds with constant holomorphic sectional curvature, which means they satisfy this uh, identity. Um, the theorem says that if X has this uh, condition that X must be one of the following uh, examples. So called com so, so, so their universal cover is a, uh, is a complex uh, space form. It's either a ball quotient or quotient by flat CN or it's a projective space, which is a projective space, a complex projective space is a compatification of CN. Okay, uh, now uh, let's move on to reach curvature and scalar curvature. The Ricci curvature is obtained by uh, contraction of the curvature with the metric. And for kilometric, uh, it has a very simple form given by the complex question of the log determinant of the Hermitian uh, metric. And scalar curvature is a, a contraction one, one time more. Um, and the average scalar curvature den denoted by underline S, uh, it turns out to be a topology constant. It only depends on the uh, first term class of X um, and the Keller class, right? So here, uh, the first term class is just the first term class of the uh, so-called anti-canonical line bundle. Okay, so we will be interested uh, in the so-called constant scalar curvature Keller metric. This is what we mean by canonical uh, metric um, in this talk. So constant scalar curvature metric uh, uh, equation is a fourth order nonlinear PDE uh, in the cater potential because we just substitute the 
this uh, omega plus uh, DTC phi into the expression of scale curvature, and then we get this uh, complicated PDE. Uh, so in general, there are obstructions to the existence of CSEK metric in the Keller class. Um, I think the first obstruction may be this uh, Matsushima Lishnerowicz uh, uh, theorem, which says that uh, if there is a CSEK metric in the Keller class, then the automorphism group of the pair must be reductive, which means that uh, more precisely, it means that it's a complexification of the isomorphic group. Uh, not every complexity group uh, is a complexification of compactity group. So, so this gives some obstruction. Uh, more advanced uh, obstruction uh, comes from this uh, kalabi Futaki invariant. Uh, it's a functional defined on uh, space of holomorphic vector fields that vanishes if there exists a CSEK metric. Uh, we'll see one um, way to define this later. Okay, so the goal of this talk is to discuss the following conjecture, which we call uh, Yautian Donaldson conjecture. More precisely, it should be called the uniform version of Yautian Donaldson conjecture. Uh, but for simplicity, let's just uh, call it Yautian Donaldson conjecture. Um, so the conjecture says that let L be an ample line bundle of X, then uh, XL admits a CSEK metric if and only if uh, it's polarized, the projective manifold is uniformly case stable, right? So I haven't defined what uh, case stability means, but uh, uh, before doing that later, I, I want to give a comparison with another problem in complex geometry, which is called the Heijin Kobayashi correspondence. Uh, this uh, correspondence says that a holomorphic vector field over a uh, uh, manifold that admit a uh, Hermitian Einstein metric if and only if it's a slope stable. Uh, to define slope stabi stability, one looks at uh, 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 well, one can see the coherence subshifts of the holomorphic vector bundle and uh, require there's some uh, slope inequality to hold. Uh, now we are considering the like uh, manifold version, intrinsic version of, of something like that. So this Yaudian Dawson conjecture says the CSEK metric should be equivalent to some kind of case stability or strengthened version of case stability. To define that, we will see that we need to consider the set of test configurations. Uh, of course, the Hitchin Kobayashi correspondence was. Uh, completed by the theorem of Donaldson, wouldn't make it a Yau, but uh, this, uh, this Yau and Donaldson conjecture for general polarized manifold uh, is open in general. But uh, recently we have some progress toward uh, this uh, conjecture. Uh, so we showed uh, that uh, if XL is uniform case stable over models, then it admits a CSEK metric. Um, so this uh, uniform case stable over models is a stronger, stability condition. Uh, so it implies the existence of CSEK metric. And we also know CSEK metric implies the uniform case stable uh, st stability over test configurations. So it's conjectured that all these uh, conditions are equivalent as we'll explain in more detail later. But one corollary uh, of this theorem is that uh, um, it actually proves uh, this uh, Yacht and Donson conjecture for, general, for, for any polarized uh, spherical manifold. Um, yeah, so this was observed by Odaka. Um, here, spherical manifolds uh, uh, are some equivalent compatifications of certain homogeneous spaces of reductive Lie groups. They include the class of toric manifolds, uh, in which case the, the, the group is just the, the complex torus. Okay, so uh, the other one important class uh, of uh, Polarize the manifolds uh, which, uh, for which the Yautian Donson conjecture was proved is uh, uh, the, the funnel manifolds, or uh, is the case of Keller Einstein manifolds. So for Keller Einstein manifolds, uh, we require the first chain class is proportional to the first chain class of L. And in this case, the CSEK metric reduces to a complex Mon Rampel equation, which is second order now. And it's well known that uh, uh, if the Ricci constant is minus one, then there always exists a Kerenstein metric approved by Aubin and Yao. And when the rich constant is zero, then we have the existence of rich flat Kerenstein metric by Yao's theorem. But the one lambda is bigger than, uh, is, is positive, uh, then there are obstructions. So in this final case, uh, the Yautian Donson conjecture has been uh, confirmed uh, and generalized to even singular Final varieties. So there are a lot of works uh, on uh, in this case, and uh, I think uh, you can find uh, several talks in the past uh, two to three ICM um, in the past. Yeah. Um, 
So I will mention something um, more later. There's also another generalization uh, to the setup of catalytic solitons uh, by uh, Tian Zhu, Burma, Win Nystrom, Data Zikihidi, Han, myself, and Lach Didi. So in the final case, uh, the story is uh, very complete uh, up now. Okay, so this is the introduction of the problem um, and some results. So next, uh, I want to give you uh, some ideas of how people have uh, been studying this uh, uh, CSEK equation and to prove uh, some criteria for the existence. Okay, so to do that, we need to look at the space of uh, carrier potentials uh, that we defined uh, before. And uh, the space of carrier forms is just the quotient of the space of potentials modular constant. And the volume is fixed depending only on the carrier class. Uh, on this space, there's a mon Jampei energy functional, uh, which can be defined by uh, its uh, variation given by this formula. Um, and uh, actually one can get uh, explicit uh, expression for this E, but uh, um, we, we, we don't need that. Um, and also we can define the uh, J norm of a cater form relative to a reference uh, cater form. Uh, it's given by this expression and you can see it's uh, uh, positive. So it's kind of a norm. It measures how far uh, is the omega phi to this reference uh, metric omega zero. And uh, we also have this important Mabuchi functional, which can be defined by this variational formula. And from it, we see that uh, the critical point of the Mabuchi functional is just the uh, CSEK metric. Right? And again, there's an explicit formula which uh, shows that it can be decomposed into three parts. The first part is really called entropy. And then we have twisted mon ramp energy defined uh, again by its variation formula. And then we have S and the right times the mon ramp energy defined in the previous uh, slide. And to study CSEK equation, people have been developing the pluripotential theory on compact cater manifolds. Let me quickly um, review that. So first we look at uh, the set of all omega zero pluri-subharmonic potentials. This P omega zero denotes a set of phi, uh, which is upper semi-continuous and satisfies uh, omega zero plus DTC phi is then negative in the sense of uh, currents or distributions. And in this bigger space, we can look at uh, uh, the so-called finite energy potentials. So phi is a, called a finite energy potential if uh, the infimum of E phi tilde, where phi tilde is any kind of potential that dominates phi, if the infimum is finite, then we call it to be a, a finite energy potential. And this uh, notion um, uh, was uh, developed in the local setting by Segrel and then generalized the, uh, to, the, to the global setting by Gage, Zariahi, and uh, studied in uh, great detail by Berman, Bookstrom, Ishidu, Gage, and Zariahi. Another concept we need uh, is called uh, uh, geodesics in this uh, finite energy, space of energy, energy potentials. So given two uh, potential phi zero and phi one from E1, then we can define the geodesic by, by defining it as the envelope. Uh, it's the supremum of phi tilde, where phi tilde is a uh, uh, P1 star omega zero PSH potentials, such as the boundary um, is bounded above by these uh, two end, uh, the, the two potentials at the end point, right? So this is uh, uh, very much like the uh, way we, we can, one can construct, uh, for example, harmonic functions by using the so-called Perron process. This is a generalization of the Perron process to the pluripotential setting. Um, and uh, if phi, uh, is smooth, uh, then it satisfies uh, the homogeneous complex mon ramp equation. Uh, again, this is uh, similar to the fact that uh, the uh, pro Perron process gives us the uh, harmonic functions satisfying Laplace equation. And uh, this is how people study the regularity of phi by, by studying the regularity of solution to this uh, complex mon ramp equation. Right? Okay, so, so here, uh, this S is a, a 
number between zero to one. So for each fixed S, we get a omega zero PSH potential. So, so we can view this as a path lying inside the, the finite energy potentials, right? And you can show that this uh, capital phi actually is S1 invariant. So it only depends on uh, this S, um, but not on the theta. Okay, so now comes the important the variational point of view. So it turns out the CSEK metric are not just the, the critical points, but they are actually minimizers of Mabuchi functional. Uh, so this depends uh, um, crucially on the convexity of the Mabuchi functional along geodesics proved by Berman, Robinson, and with the earlier work by Chen and Tian. Another important fact uh, from obtained by using pluripotential theory is that uh, all the previous functionals, uh, uh, which were originally defined over smooth catalytic potentials, they can all be defined on the space of uh, uh, finite energy potentials. Okay, now I can state a uh, uh, criterion for the existence of CSEQ metric. So here we fix uh, maximal torus uh, inside the automorphism group, which we can assume to be reductive because of this uh, Matsushima Nishinorovic's uh, uh, theorem. That's a necessary condition for the existence. And now we have this uh, theorem which says that uh, there exists a CSTK metric uh, in uh, the Peter class if and only if this Mabuchi functional is coercive in some sense, which means that uh, there exists a constant such that uh, for any S1 to the R invariant potential, this inequality is satisfied. Right. So, so this is a little technical, but uh, actually it is uh, quite intuitive because if you look at the previous picture, then you see that uh, if there exists a minimizer, then this functional should be coercive. That means that uh, if, the, uh, if in the space of Keter forms, uh, the Keter metric goes to plus infinity, then this functional should uh, have a uh, uh, should grow to infinity, right? So, so this is a precise way to say that uh, uh, this functional behaves uh, in a coer coercive way. And here we, we, we because in general, this uh, uh, X may admit uh, automorphism group, uh, continuous, continuous automorphism group. So we need to somehow state this coercivity by module of the group. That's why we take the infimum of J functional over all the uh, elements in the, over all the, uh, in the orbit in, of, of, of the T torus action. Okay. So uh, in the Kleinstein case, uh, this inequality turns out to be equivalent to uh, moser Schrodinger type inequality. And uh, such results uh, uh, were proved a uh, long time ago by Tian, Tian Zhu. Uh, Fong, Song, Sturm, Weinkopf, and later actually um, refined by Davash and Rubinstein. Okay, so uh, here um, I should mention this result is, uh, is, a, is, a, is a hard result. For example, to prove the existence of CSEK metric uh, uh, by assuming the coercivity, there are hard PDE estimates which, uh, uh, which are obtained only very recently by Chen and Chen. Mm. The other direction um, is um, largely based on pluripotential theory and proved by Berman, Dawash, and Lu. And we give a version um, by incorporating this maximum torus. Okay, so to make contact uh, with the LGB geometry side, we, we want to re reformulate the criteria in a different way. Um, so, to do that, uh, we look at uh, uh, the so-called geodesic rays. The geodesic ray is just a ray of uh, uh, finite energy potentials such that each segment is a geodesic segment. It's the same as the Euro definition of geodesic ray in Riemannian geometry, but uh, we, we, we put it in, in the new setting. Um, and for each functional, uh, for, for the, if F is a Mabuchi functional or this uh, J functional modular the group action, we define a slope of this functional at infinity, right? So if you look at the previous picture, then you see in the coercive case, then when you go to infinity, then you, you should have a slope again, because we know that there's some convexity property of the functionals. So at infinity, the slope should be positive for the functional to be coercive, right? Uh, and for, for the Mabuchi functional to be coercive. So we want to 
extract that information. So we define this slope at infinity just by defining the limit of the ratio. Um, and uh, the previous uh, criterion can be stated uh, in, in the following way. So the Mabuchi functional is coercive if and only if the slope is positive along any non-trivial geodesic. Uh, the non-trivial geodesic must be have some speed. Now we can normalize that speed to be one expressed by using the J slope. Okay, so this theorem can be stated uh, um, shortly by just saying that uh, existence of six sigma metric is equivalent to some kind of geodesic stability, uh, where I think geodesic stability was, uh, um, um, this notion was proposed by, by, by Donalds. Okay, so this is the analytic uh, story. Now let's move on to the algebraic story. Okay, because I want to define what case stability means, right? As I said, so we need to look uh, at uh, objects called test configurations. What is test configuration? A test configuration for the pair XL is the following data. Uh, it's a family of varieties, projective varieties, such that uh, uh, it's a family over C, such that uh, away from zero, each fiber is isomorphic to X. And we have a, we have a pi ample, so relative ample, Q line bundle, it's a generalization of line bundle to the fractional setting. Um, Q line bundle such that uh, when you restrict to the, the generic fiber, it's uh, isomorphic to L, we started with. Moreover, there's a C action on the total space and the line bundles uh, such that this projection pi is a C star equivalent. Uh, if we denote uh, the generating holomorphic vector field by eta, then the push forward of eta give us this contracting vector field on C, minus T partial T, right? So here's the, some like a sketchy picture. Uh, the nearby fiber, nearby fiber is uh, always uh, isomorphic to X uh, with a line band of L, but the central fiber may be singular. We have several component, a irreducible component. Uh, this is the intrinsic uh, way to define uh, task con configuration. Another helpful way to think about task configuration is the extrinsic uh, view. That is, uh, uh, as we said, so you can embed this X into projective space because we assume L is the ample. And then you choose a one parameter subgroup in the group of projective transformations generated by this vector field eta, and you move this X inside this PN. Then because you have compactness of the Huber scheme, and then in the limit, uh, you get some limit uh, variety denoted by x0, uh, x0. And then you can collect uh, all these uh, images uh, together to form this total space. And also you can pull back uh, uh, the hyperplane bundle to get this uh, curly L. Right? So these are two essentially equivalent ways to think about test configurations. Uh, there are two. Uh, Simple, but the basic examples of task conversions. A trivial task conversion uh, just uh, consists of the product x times c, and they pull back the line bundle from x to get the line bundle over the product. And uh, for eta, it just choose to be minus t partial t on, on c. And another example is the product task conversion. Um, you take the product, you pull back the line bundle to the product, but for eta, you choose V minus T partial T, where V is a holomorphic vector view on X. Now, assume V generates a C stack. Okay, so now for task, any task creation, we can define some algebraic invariants by using intersection theory on the canonical combatification on the task creation. Because uh, as we said, so away from the uh, central fiber, we just have the product X times C star. So we can glue that to the product X times P1 removing zero, it's X times C, right? So you can glue them together. Then you add a fiber at infinity, trivial fiber XL at infinity, then we get a, a compact variety over P1. And then we can do some intersection of line bundle or divisors, depending on how you, what, what language you want to use them. So, so then we can use the intersection numbers to define these algebraic invariants. 
right? So for this uh, uh, E functional J and Mabuchi functional from the previous slides, we all have uh, the algebraic version of them. Um, for example, if we choose the product test equation generated by holomorphic vector fields, then this Mabuchi, what I call non commedia Mabuchi functional actually recovers the Kalabi Futaki mart. It was observed by Tian. Um, so some of you may be curious why there's a, an A there. And the, it turns out there's some um, framework behind the, uh, behind the, the definition of task variations. Um, so by the work of uh, Wu Zhang, books on Fabian Yongsen, we know that the task conversions actually define some non-Archimedean pluri subharmonic matrix on the so-called Berkovich identification uh, with respect to the trivial evaluation on C. Okay, so, so these are like uh, complicated words, but uh, for, for purpose of this talk, actually we don't need the, the precise information about them because we can just define this uh, uh, using intersection numbers on the compact variety. Okay, so now I can state the definition of uh, case stability or uniform case stability. Uh, this is a strength, strengthened version of case stability originally introduced by Tian and Donaldson, and refined by Ziki Hidi, Durban, Buxom, Hisamoto, Yonsen, and also uh, Hisamoto by himself. So we say that XL is uniformly case stable if uh, there exists a gamma positive number such that for any uh, T equivalent test configuration, this uh, non comedian Mabuchi functional is bigger uh, equal than gamma times J, non comedian J. Uh, again, here, because uh, we want to uh, take the automorphism group into consideration, so we we need to model this automorphism group in the non-comedian setting. So, so that's why we take the infimum among all the, some kind of T orbit of this non-comedian J functional. Okay, so this condition matches uh, uh, the previous coercivity condition, right? So some, somehow the idea is that uh, uh, later we will see that uh, we want to keep track uh, of the um, slope information of the functional at infinity. Well, this will be made more precise later. Um, but the one, one reason to introduce this case stability notion is that uh, it gives a necessary condition for the existence of CSEK metric. So this is uh, essentially the result of Berman, Davash, and Lu. Um, so if XL admits a CSEK metric, actually this pair is uniformly case stable uh, in this sense. Okay, so then I want to uh, move uh, slightly away from the, the previous uh, discussion, I want to say something about case stability of final varieties. Uh, this is related to the existence of Kahnstein metric, right? So if X is a Q final variety, which means that uh, this minus KX is an ample Q line bundle and the X has a, a mild so-called KLT singularities. Um, now let's recall the traditional way to define case stability which says that uh, uh, X is called K polystable if the non Mabuchi functional is uh, non negative uh, and is equal to zero only if this uh, uh, test conversion is a product test conversion. And similarly, you can define stability. Um, and the recent uh, very important result by Liu and Xu and Zhuang uh, says that uh, for any Q final variety, actually K polystability is equivalent to the uniform case stability. stability uh, I defined uh, before in the previous slide. Okay. Um, and as I said, so the Yautian Donson conjecture has been generalized to work for all Q final varieties. Right? So this is the result uh, uh, of myself with Tian and Wang and uh, myself uh, regarding the, the, the case of automorphism groups. Continuous autonomous groups. So now we know that for any final variety, the existence of a Klein slide metric is equivalent to uniform case stability. Uh, in, in our result, we use the strength, strengthened the case stability. But if you combine these results, then we get to the uh, very satisfactory um, 
answer to this Yautian Donaldson conjecture, which says that the existence of Kainstein matrix is equivalent to k-poly stability. So this works for any possible singular final variety. Yeah. Uh, so for general uh, polarization, uh, it's expected that this uh, equivalence between k-poly stability and uniform k-stability is not true. Yeah, but, but, but for some class, uh, it, it should be true. Uh, but it's not clear what exactly what class, for what class are the two notions equivalent. Uh, for final variety, this is known. Okay, uh, another uh, important aspect in the final case is that uh, we, uh, we look at uh, these uh, special test conversions. Uh, this uh, notion is uh, essentially due to Tian. So a test conversion is called a special if a central fiber is itself a final variety, Q final variety. In particular, the central fiber is irreducible. Uh, so 10 years ago, uh, I, I, I proved uh, with uh, Chen Yangxu uh, this result, uh, which says that to test K stability, or polystability of X is enough to test on special test conditions, right? So the so idea is that uh, if you're given any test conversion, uh, we can transform the test conversion um, by using the so-called minimal model program to a special test conversion. And we can show that in this process, uh, this uh, non-Kimian median Mabuchi functional is uh, decreasing. There's some monot monot monotonicity uh, formula, which allows us to uh, uh, to prove this result. And this result has uh, uh, several important uh, consequences. Uh, first, in this, for special task conventions, the central fiber X0 actually defines a divisorial valuation uh, associated to a prime divisor on X tilde, which is uh, uh, birational to X. And I, I showed that, uh, I showed that uh, um, this Mabuchi functional for test, special test conventions actually can be written uh, in, by, in this formula. Uh, this AXE is called the log discrepancy of the divisor. And then you have the integral of some volume functional of line bundles. Uh, uh, nowadays, it's usually called beta invariant. And this expression with uh, this theorem together with this theorem um, leads to some value criterion for k stability of X. So X is k-stable if and only if the beta E is, uh, is positive for any prime divisor E over X. It's due to myself, Fujita, and later the, necess the, the other direction is proved by Blue and Xu. Okay, so, but this, uh, in recent years, actually, there are a lot of activities uh, in studying k-stability of final varieties, and there are many deep and strong results. Um, which uh, uh, essentially complete uh, the basic theory of uh, case stability of, in the final case, right? So, so I don't have much time to go into details of each of these uh, items. So I refer you to uh, my survey articles uh, uh, for the proceeding. Okay, so finally, in the last part, I want to talk about uh, how the analytic uh, uh, aspect and the algebraic aspect can be mixed together to, to achieve uh, some results uh, toward the Yautian Donaldson conjecture. Right? So, again, we look at uh, task variations. Away from the central fiber, this line bundle is just a pullback of L to the product X times C star. So, if you restrict uh, any Hermitian metric on the curly L to each fiber, then we get a Hermitian metric uh, uh, on the fiber, generic fiber. Uh, if, then we get a, a array of uh, um, omega zero PSH uh, functions uh, um, associated to any uh, test conversion. So phone and Sturm show that uh, actually there's a unique geodesic array that's, uh, that corresponds to a bounded PSH Hermitian metric uh, on, the, on the total line bundle. And for these, for these uh, geodesic arrays uh, associated to task conversions, actually the analytic invariance, uh, the slope at infinity and the, the non commuting invariance that uh, uh, they, they coincide. This is the following theorem, which says uh, for any function from this collection, then we have the slope at infinity along the geodesic array is given by the algebraic uh, or non commuting invariance of the task conversion. Right, so this is uh, due to um, 
the different uh, for different functions, this is due to many uh, different people. Tian, Feng, Ross, Stern, Buxom, Hisamoto, Yons, and uh, Hisamoto, uh, myself, and Xia. In particular, I proved this uh, formula for, for the entropy part. Okay, so now the Yang Hedong's conjecture uh, is reduced uh, to uh, the following two questions. First, if we have a geodesic ray, uh, can it be approximated by geodesic rays associated to task conditions? Uh, we can call this, uh, this if, if, if it can be approximated, then we say that it's algebraically approximable. And second question is whether the slope of the function at infinity can be approximated by the non comedian invariance of task conversions. Right? So the, the precise conjecture says that the phi and the slope can all be approximated by algebraic objects. So for the first question, Actually, this answer is yes, but, but it's not a, a, a very um, obvious because Dabash, Buxom, uh, Berman, Buxom, Johnson, they show that uh, geodesic rays in finite energy space uh, in generally are not uh, algebraically approximable, but surprisingly, none of them is destabilizing. So in fact, if a geodesic ray phi has a finite uh, slope, uh, Mabuchi slope at infinity, then then we can indeed find the task conversions such that the associated geodesic rays converge to, to this geodesic ray. Moreover, if the functional is one of these functional E, E, K, J, T, then the non median uh, invariant, invariants converge to the slope. So these task conversions are constructed by blowing up multi sheaves. So this construction goes back uh, um, at least to the Mai in Ladas field and carried out in the, uh, in the following setting by Berman, Buxom, Johnson. Uh, but uh, at that time, they, they show that uh, you can construct these uh, task conversions and uh, the geodesic rays converge to some geodesic ray, but they, they don't know whether the limit coincides with this phi. And what I showed is that uh, as long as the slope at infinity is uh, finite, then indeed, so it converges to, to this uh, geodesic ray. So recall that the Mabuchi functional has uh, three parts, entropy, E, K, and uh, E. Uh, so, so the remaining conjecture is that uh, this entropy, for the entropy, uh, the slope can be approximated by non-comedian objects. This is one version of the uh, regularization conjecture by Buxom and Yonsen. So currently this uh, regularization conjecture is uh, still open, but we can say something about that. Uh, to do that, uh, we introduce this uh, concept of model. Uh, so in the definition of task ratio, we require the line band over the total space to be relatively ample, relative ample. If we remove this condition, now we call this, call this uh, XL to be a model. Uh, and because we have some translation invariant uh, property of the functional, so we can assume this uh, compatified uh, line bundle is big. It's called a big line bundle. And then we can define some algebraic invariants using essentially the same formula, but we, we generalize uh, um, this uh, by using the notion of uh, positive intersection products. This was introduced by books on Fabio Jonsen uh, in the study of invariants of big line bundles. So this uh, makes contact with the work of uh, Fujita Tsuji, books on Jonsen, Fabio Jonsen, and Ladasfil Mustada Nakamaya Popa. Yeah. So indeed, so if we use the more general models, then indeed we can approximate the slope by algebraic invariance of models. Uh, this, this is what uh, the result says. And this implies the previous uh, model version of the Yautian Donson conjecture. And actually there's some framework behind uh, all this. So books on Fabio Jones and Berman, books on Jonsen, they, they develop some uh, pretty potential theory in the non-comedian setting, and they establish uh, some correspondence. So in this correspondence, uh, the task conditions uh, correspond to some smooth uh, PSH uh, metric in the non-comedian setting. And the models, uh, in, in my sense, uh, give rise to uh, continuous uh, non-comedian PSH uh, um, metric. And the uh, approximable geodesic rays uh, uh, is equivalent to, to finite energy uh, non-comedian potentials. So in other words, uh, all these uh, classical notion like uh, smooth scalar potentials, finite energy potential, they have some 
corresponding objects in the NAC meeting setting. Okay. So from this uh, 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 relation, we know that uh, we have a more and more general objects. So if you test the stability over more general object, then it's stronger. That means geodesic stability is stronger than case stability over models, and uh, which is uh, stronger than case stability over test conversions. So our goal now is to somehow, because we know uh, CSK metric is equivalent to geodesic stability. So we want to move all the way to case stability to over test simulations. What, what we can do now that the result, the, the, the model version tells us that we can, we can move to the middle. We can show that uh, in some sense, we can, we, we can show that case stability over models uh, implies the existence of CSK metric. What we would like to do is to move this step all the way to the end. So, but uh, we haven't been able to do that. But here we can reduce that uh, last step to a uh, purely uh, algebra geometric conjecture, which would imply a uniform Yalta Nelson conjecture and the regularization conjecture by Buxom Yonsen. So this conjecture says that if you have a big line bundle over um, X bar. Actually, in this conjecture, you can state it uh, in the general setting. It does not have to be uh, 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 from this uh, um, equivalent setting. So if you have a big line bundle over a projective manifold X, then the conjecture says there exists a, a sequence of birational morphisms uh, from XM to X such that if you pull back this uh, big line bundle, it decomposes into the ample part and the effective part such that uh, the volume of the ample part converges to the volume of the big line bundle. And this is uh, guaranteed to be true by Fujita's uh, approximation theorem. But uh, the conjecture requires uh, uh, that the next uh, uh, Riemann-Roch coefficients also converge. In other words, the intersection number of Lm to the n to with the canonical um, divisor of xm bar should converge to uh, the derivative of the volume along the direction of the canonical uh, divisor. Right? So, so this conjecture is true if L bar admits a uh, uh, birational Zariski decomposition. Um, here, birational Zariski decomposition means that uh, you can find a birational morphism such that if you pull back this L bar, it, this pullback can be decomposing to the um, NAF part and the effective part, such as NAF part recovers all the holomorphic sections of L bar. Um, in general, we know that there are big line bundles which does not admit birational Zariski decomposition. But uh, if it admits a birational Zariski decomposition, then this conjecture turns out to be true. In particular, if the projecting manifold is spherical, as I defined earlier, then uh, this uh, model, total space of a model, is a more dream space, which means that uh, the L bar already admits a Zariski decomposition. So in that case, this conjecture is also true. That uh, explains why in the spherical case, uh, we have the Yalta and Donaldson conjecture. Okay, so that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this rich and interesting talk. Uh, bye to all the online participants. <laughs>